Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, speaking of PM snacks, do you have a favorite PM snack, evening snack? We, we just talked about this. I'll usually, and you know what I have to tell you? You inspired it like years ago. Whoa. You made a post. Um, it's, and Sean loves it too, husband Sean. Um, Non-fat, uh, like Faye Greek yogurt, mm -hmm. um, and I'll put dark chocolate chips in it, mm. um, and some like either raspberries or uh, strawberries or blueberries. Sometimes I'll put protein powder in it because it's chocolate, and then it'll make it like chocolate pudding. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'll put it in the refrigerator for like 15 minutes to get it like super cold. Ooh, so it's almost like sounds like it's got like a little bit of an ice creamy like yeah. like a sweet yeah. And, and it's healthy. Sean is a sweet tooth, and he eats ice cream all the time, and he's in. I have to like. I just, I'm like, well, you're going to have ice cream. I'm going to have this little, this little snack. <laughs> but it's so that. good, and it's full, filling, and in the summertime, it's, like, cold. Sometimes I'll freeze it, but freezing frozen yogurt sometimes can not have that same um, texture. And regardless, it's got nutrients. Mm -hmm. It's healthy. You get good gut bacteria from the yogurt. You're getting uh, a little bit of a zag with, like, the chocolate chips mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah, it's um, like that you get the 8% cocoa, like, cocoa nibs. Yeah, and some, some fruit in there, which has great nutrients, too, and just has a similar but different feel than say something like ice cream, which like, whew, slippery slope, you know? Mm -hmm. um, uh, two of mine would be, I put blueberries in a um, container in the freezer and I'll just, man, something about that texture and taste mm -hmm. of like, I feel like I could just go to town and eat them all. That's delicious and it's healthy. And then the other is I love to end my days. And this to me is like the signification that like I am done eating is I'll eat my meal, and then I will have a small piece of dark chocolate, about 72% plus. Um, I believe it's like, I even got some almonds in it. So it's like, there's that and like a small piece and I'll have a seltzer. I know you could drink seltzer throughout the day, I can't. <laughs> the seltzer for me is the last thing. It kind of fills up my stomach volume. I have a nice piece of chocolate and it's a nice cap to end the day. Okay. Brush my teeth and I'm like, done, <laughs> you know? Um, I know, I have so much seltzers all day long. <laughs> you do, you do. This leads into another great question of, um, we can get asked, why can't I seem to resist my sugar cravings in the evening? Do I really lack self-control? Uh, well, the one answer could be possibly. Yeah. Without, <laughs> without knowing an individual and who this individual is and a little bit more data, maybe, okay. <laughs> maybe, what and is also, you know, you said like with kids, we're trained as kids and young adults to get a treat after True. a meal. So it could just be something wired in our system that is like, you know, I have dinner and then I have a treat. Or I have dinner yeah. and then I have dessert. Yeah, if we even pause for a second, I think a, 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 a total reframing around healthy eating where it doesn't have to be this super rigid lifestyle of a without aspect of the occasional treat or zag or whatever, where I don't have to be all the way over here and then just swing back over here, you know? And I think sometimes folks can think healthy eating means salads only mm -hmm. and vegetables and a plethora of all these things. And it doesn't necessarily have to be limited to those things. Sure, those things are great. Um, I think it's a wider reframe to think about our holistic health of the longevity I wanna be here, how I wanna feel. Um, and you even mentioned a thought there with kids of, of kids. There's going to be, if, you have, if you're a parent, you're going to have things in the home that maybe you wouldn't eat goldfish or uh, snacks that, that the children eat that can be challenging at times to resist. And it's going to be, I, I think about this, like I thought about this with your back, your problems are your gifts. So maybe I do need to work on my self-discipline or my self-control and not give in every time I give them goldfish, like I need to eat some too. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just say, no, no, you know, I don't need to do that. Yeah. You know, so going back to the original question, you know, first answer is maybe probably there's an element there. However, what's more likely at play? Probably not getting enough, uh, enough fuel throughout the day. Like yeah. whether it's just completely under eating, um, not getting enough of, um, like of the good things that we need. We find this issue a lot that folks, uh, and I'll even share predominantly a lot of, a lot of females are under eating and they're under eating a lot of the things that they need to be eating or would benefit be eating. 
And you know, you have a story here that I think would be great to kind of summarize of folks initially think eating more of anything is gonna equal weight gain. More equals weight gain. When that's not the truth, more of the right things actually bring your metabolism back into fully functioning. It gets the system optimized. You're probably back to eating in balance and you're satiated and you're, you're, you're eating more of the right things. And what tends to happen, Abby? <laughs> to hold on to body fat and you lose muscle. No, 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 when you, when you. <laughs> I thought it was where you're under eating. No, 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 when you do what your client did. When you, oh, when you, when you, <laughs> yeah. the opposite. I thought you were saying when you under eat. No, 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 no. <laughs> what, what, to pin it back, that was like a that was like a dribble and like you were going for the layup and you just like tripped and face planted and like the ball came back and hit me in the face. <laughs> so to re like to that. reframe to reframe. I swear that's how I thought you were framing the question. I hope I didn't. I don't <laughs> hope it is. Okay. Uh, say it correctly. What happens when, in your experience and our experience, coaching people when we get them to eat more of the right things, which they historically in the past think more equal weight gain, but when they eat more of the right things throughout the day, what tends to happen? They end up losing body fat and gaining muscle. Yeah. Um, I've had, I can think of three to four women in their 50s or older that don't particularly do a lot of movement just yet, like starting to maybe like a little bit of walking or maybe a physical job. Mm -hmm. um, but we simply, we didn't take anything out to start we simply just paid attention to eating more protein, eating two to three times a day versus one time a day, and have had so so much success in the first 30 days of like losing anywhere from five to seven pounds of body fat and gaining like a half pound to about a pound of muscle. And that's without any training. Tr any tr uh, resistance that's or strength training. Huge. And that's to go back, so I'm not <laughs> looking like a, a a silly over here. Um, the opposite that I've seen is that when somebody completely under eats yeah. or severely under eats like one meal a day or waits hours from when they train to the first meal that they have, mm -hmm. we tend to lose muscle and hold on to body fat. The body's funny like that. If we think, we, I shared this with you multiple times. If we think back to when we didn't have you know, roofs over our head and maybe it was more like we're out in nature and maybe there's a tent and we gotta go kill something. Your body wants to store body fat for preservation of heat, to protect your organs, like all these purposes, of course. So if I go back to that, like the body goes back to that, that way of operating, like, okay, I don't know when I'm gonna get my next meal, so I need to store as much fat to keep you warm. It's winter and X, Y, Z, you know, it makes sense when we think about that. And I would, I could also understand where someone eating less thinks that's the way to go. And it's, it's not, you yeah. know, it's, and it's, so there's a learning curve when folks come out of, cause nutrition is so layered. There's emotion, there's lack of information. It's confusing. And we talked about this. Imagine, imagine back before you went to college or wherever in your life or, and, or me, and you had someone to kind of guide you to say, Hey, you know, Let's, let's take a little deeper dive here. Let's take this complex thing and let's break it down where you can understand it and you can start to make better decisions, form some better ways of thinking of how to eat better when you're out at a restaurant. How do you even look and sort based, based on what you know you need and will enjoy versus just purely emotion and what mm -hmm. your taste buds, what you think they want. Because I don't know about you, a mistake I can clearly make is let my eyes be bigger than, you know, anything else and order too much or and just feel like crap you know the body has a funny way of talking to you too and um you know another unique share is having not drank any alcohol in a really long time having very little interactions with um sugar on a daily basis or any form of zags when i do have those things they almost come with a experience that is so <laughs> unenjoyable that i'm like my, my body is like rejecting it because I just would imagine it's so cleaned out. Mm -hmm. And that could just be unique to me. Um, sometimes that doesn't happen, but uh, yeah, my body's like, what are you doing, man? That's, that's um, I think back from, it's the same way, like I wasn't raised on um, sugar. Like I said, we indulged on other things. Like I said, it was like 
pasta on Wednesdays and Sundays. That was mm. like the visual for um, what we did. My grandmother lived downstairs from us. Um, but sugar in high doses or in any dose really, like I can't really eat ice cream. And I really enjoy having ice cream in the summer every once in a while. Yeah. Um, but I'll, I'll joke with um, Sean about getting like ice cream dreams. Like if I do <laughs> indulge and I have like a little bit of ice cream, oh my God, it's just like, it's just such a sugary belly feeling and I have the craziest dreams. Um, so I usually, it's not usually in, in, like I don't indulge with sugar, but when I do, I definitely get that like sugar belly. That's like the only way I can describe it. Yeah. Do you, uh, a question that comes up often is, should I stop eating uh, two hours before bed? And what are your thoughts around that? Um, I, for me, yes, and I, I, I think that that is beneficial to, you know, uh, the general population for sure. Um, let your body digest and like get settled in before you go to bed. I've heard many times be like joking about the dreams, like it can affect uh, dreams, GI system. I know that for myself, if I eat really close to bed or if I eat and fall asleep, I get like a, um, a little bit of indigestion. Mm. Um, but just letting the body um, get completely settled before being able to sleep and get that like nice seven to eight hours of like REM sleep. Yeah, I think in a perfect world, if that's doable for you, um, I think there's a lot of benefit with digestion, mm -hmm. with getting better sleep. And your metabolism slows down while you're sleeping extremely. You know, maybe even easier sleep patterns that can be more consistent. Um, and especially if your goal is to not put on weight, you essentially are stopping any eating point beyond that. So that can be super helpful. And it also builds in a routine. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I can think about some of the clients that were like, I, uh, uh, challenge for them was like that they felt as though that they had to eat um to keep busy almost like up to the point of going to bed so it was like getting a snack and like eating while watching tv and then going back and having something while watching tv and it was like putting that um, putting those together yeah. and once we kind of started to break that it was like i don't need to have a snack while i'm watching tv like i don't need to do associations exactly yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um that was a big one for me is uh so we put a timer and that was huge oh cool mm -hmm. Good, good, good. Um, What'd you say? For, for I grew up in a household where I remember as a really impressionable age, seeing my mom on the couch with Lay's potato chips, watching Wheel of Fortune, Jeopardy, and kind of like ending her days in a certain time period like that. And then I found myself as an adult living on my own, there was a time period where I would do something very similar with like a bowl of Tostitos or chips. And I even did a, a write up one time on this where I would try to contain myself. This is a funny share. One bowl. Okay, one bowl because you're trying to control the quantity. And those things have those additives that just, you. it is hard to stop. I know it is for me and like I want to just keep going. So one bowl became two, two bowl quickly became the bag. And before I knew it, um, I had over maybe the course of say like a month and this would be, I would just go each week get a bag or X, Y, Z. I had put on like extra fat around my midsection that I was like, oof, like, I don't, I don't like how that looks and how it feels. I felt it sure a little bit in the gym. Um, and when I did the math, it was, I wanna say the two bowls were like close to like 900 calories empty, just in high carbs, high fats. And then when you go to the bag, you're probably talking about like even doubling and maybe even tripling that mm -hmm. of like empty calories that are just uh, putting me over maybe like my maintenance or baseline that like I would just stay the same at. And I just it would, adds up so quickly. It adds up so quickly. And this is the sneaky thing about nutrition slash where, I don't understand how it, how it got here. And there, it's, it's simple uh, when you really let, or like zoom in and say, like we go back to that bagel and you know, if your coffee, you go to say, you know, you get it gussied up. There could be a couple hundred calories in the coffee alone and then the sugars and like that stuff counts. I know, I have two shares. One is when you share, remember, I remember forever ago you sharing that about the bowl. So on New Year's Eve, I was like, oh, it's New Year's Eve, I'm gonna have like a little treat. And we got all those like wonderful snacks from Tierra Farm from mm -hmm. the Meltzes. And there's everything bagel seasoned cashews. Oh, you had no control. <laughs> well, no, so I was like, okay, I wanna, you know, have a little like end of the night, like fun snack. little snack. Mm -hmm. So I'm in, the cabinet trying to find the smallest bowl possible because yeah, cashews have 
they're like high fat. And they're so good. They're so good. Um, and I literally, I don't know how I found like a little ramekin that Sean brought home and it's like this big. <laughs> and I didn't even eat them all. And Sean comes home and he's like, what's this thing? And I was like, that's mine. That was like my little serving of nuts. He's like, you didn't even finish it. And I was like, I just needed the smallest bowl possible because if I put it in a big bowl, I would have eaten the whole thing. Yeah. Um, that's one chair. And two, going back to the ice cream, Sean will grab ice cream and bring it home. And just curious, I looked and I and it was one of them it was like Haagen Dazs something, and it was 1,500 calories per serving, and there were two servings Whoa. in the pint. See, I was like you're being... three thousand calories in a pint of ice cream. But that's great nutrition label food educated. You yeah. can see that and understand that. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Sneaky places calories add up. Well, I'll throw this one in here. Cheeses, mm -hmm. and like these are things that I know are tasty. Mm -hmm. Cheeses are tasty, but they are, and for I'll speak for me, I can, like, cheese can be very rewarding palate-wise, but for me, I've seen it immediately show on my body like that. I don't know why. It, super high calorie, the way my body does, I don't know, but cheese is one where it can just really add up quickly. Um, and a lot of, um, a lot of misconception could be that cheese is protein. Yes, it has a small amount of protein in it. This is a good one, But yeah. high fat. Let's talk about uh, examples of fats and proteins. I think this could be helpful for the group. Um, so we'll go to fats first. What are some examples of healthy fats? Um, we love them. Avocado. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, any sort of uh, nuts mm -hmm. or nut butters, almond butter. Um, and you like Brazilian Brazil nuts are good, right? Brazil nuts. And Brazil nuts, a little kind of asterisk here, three nuts are nine grams of fat. And I'll typically eat nine to 12. So think about that. Nine nuts would be 27 oh, grams wow. of fat. So it is a easy thing to just like keep mm -hmm. going. Or like you said, cashews, Yep, cashews, you know, the... walnuts are really, and these are things that are great. You just have to be mindful of the quantity. Yep. Macadamia nuts, because we got a bag of macadamia nuts in there. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, avocado oil. Yep. Oils. Uh, grass fed butter, olive oil. Um, um, and so we'll put a pause on fats. Let's go to lean protein sources. Mm -hmm. uh, right. Lean, the leanest, uh, chicken, turkey. Yeah, 99% chick, fat-free chicken, uh, turkey breast. Um, pork is on the leaner side. Pork is leaner, yep, whey, a whey protein. Be mindful of like looking at your, your metrics mm -hmm. there. Um, Non-fatty fish, like shrimp. Shrimp, tuna, egg whites. Now, none of these things probably sound super sexy. Yeah, right? non-fat Greek yogurt. Non-fat Greek yogurt, <laughs> okay. Deli turkey is in there. Now this is where it gets interesting. Combo foods, okay? Things that are a little bit tastier have fat. So what are some examples of something that's maybe heavy in protein, but also comes with it mm -hmm. some good fat that we need to account for? Yep, eggs. Eggs, one to one there. Six grams of protein per six grams of fat. Red meats. Yeah, ribeyes, um, like uh, of ground food. beef. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these things are great. They have iron. They have a lot of uh, amazing nutrient profiles. Mm -hmm. If you eat red meat, some they of, also come with fat. Yep, some of the fattier fish like salmon. Mm -hmm. um, the, most fishes uh, come with it fat. There's some leaner fishes out there, but most fishes come with it fat. Now, fish is something I would, if you can, um, if you enjoy it, I would definitely include in your diet. Great for you. I would just be very mindful of the amount of fat that that comes with that meal as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, like chicken thighs. Oh yeah. People love chicken thighs. Um, of course, those come with a lot of fat. Mm -hmm. You know, what's a what's a people think it's protein, but it's really a fat. Peanuts. <laughs> Peanuts, peanut butter, <laughs> uh, bacon. Oh, bacon. These things are great. They're tasty. Why are they so tasty? Because of fat. That's tasty. Now, keep this in mind. Protein, four calories per gram. Carbs, four calories per gram. Fats, nine calories per gram. Fats are not the devil either. We just need to be mindful and aware of our plate. So if I have fish and rice and some veggies and more fat, I'm going maybe a little OD in the fat without even realizing it, even though it's healthy. You can overeat in the healthy realm too. So again, awareness. Um, we talked about lean proteins. Then we talked about combo proteins where you're getting uh, proteins and fats. Mm -hmm. And then of course there's some like, uh, like a milk could be like a dairy mm -hmm. and that could be um, 
a carb and a fat and a protein, almost kind of protein. hitting hitting almost all of them. Um, beans. Beans, yep. Beans are, are like, beans come with, yes, protein, um, but also carbohydrates and fats. If you don't eat meat, here's something that I learned recently that I think is impactful to share. It, I, in a perfect world, from my research and what I've learned, meat has the most balanced amino acid profile, which is ideal. If we don't eat meat, which is absolutely um, a person's choice, it, you can still com you, uh, accomplish that. It's just gonna be a little bit more work on your part. Mm -hmm. You know, there's things where, like I was sick recently, so I, um, first time in so long, the bread man came back out. I needed <laughs> to get some bread because, yes. I don't wanna tell you guys what I was experiencing, but I needed to, I needed to get my stomach regular. Is that like burnt bread or something like that? Yeah, just the toast. Um, so, um, where was I going with bread? Oh, eat bread, it, it, you know, I got um, like a grain bread that had some protein, but it's an incomplete protein. And most vegetable uh, or vegetarian or non-meat sources are incomplete. They're lacking somewhere in the amino acid profile, which of all the amino acids come together to complete a protein. So just some information there that you can, yes, you can still uh, thrive on those particular diets. Interestingly enough, and this is not to knock it, just to share, I've met two people within, I wanna say two weeks apart, or, or maybe somewhere in that window, both who were former vegetarians and said it was the worst they felt. And they, I, for whatever reason, oh, interestingly, I'm just sharing yeah. from a completely like, everything's a learning experience, could be just unique to them. Um, but, and he, he, this person, and I will give him a lot of credit who I met recently was like, it, could, it was largely on me how mm -hmm. I approached it, you know, so. Did you try vegetarian? Yeah, so um, to kind of like segue into maybe some, some health stuff is, I have familial high cholesterol. And uh, I learned that probably in the military, first that I had high cholesterol and I thought that was unique. And I at first thought, oh, this growing up with my dad and the, you know, maybe that played its role. And it probably did. And I have to take some ownership in, in, in that. Then I learned my father has it, I have it, my brother has it. And what was more interesting was I did this two year experiment where um, I did routine blood work every three months for two years. And I would do specific things in either three month or six month experiments to see what I could do to change my cholesterol profile. And one of those, because the doctor was very heavy in pushing uh, a drug like they would. And I was like, nope, you know, I'm going to try these other avenues as I believe we should. And of course I work out regularly. I was eating, I would say, um, reasonably well. And when I say reasonably, giving myself cushion to say, not the, not the best, but also, you know, I would say 70, 30 probably at the time. So I really was nudging me to clean that up. And uh, so I did experiments. And one of the experiments, experiments uh, was, was giving up meat for, I wanna say somewhere in a, the time span of four to six months. Oh, wow. It was, it was pretty lengthy. Um, some I things I noticed was in the beginning, um, uh, I had an amazing aerobic uh, effect. So like, I felt great aerobically. Mm -hmm. I think any change you do make initially kind of gives you a, a real big push. I did get weaker and I felt that and I lost weight and it was hard to keep weight on. It was a lot of work to try to get the full amino acid profile and it didn't feel like something for me that was sustainable for the long haul. And that's mm -hmm. the biggest, I think, takeaway in terms of nutrition. With whatever path you go, because there's a lot of things out there, there's uh, paleo, there's Whole30, there's keto, there's all these things. It's realistically asking yourself, what will I commit to doing and doing regularly and consistently a majority of the time? And as coaches, how we approach the whole arena of teaching people about nutrition is giving them the gift and teaching them and holding them accountability and providing support in learning the appropriate habits. There's, I would say, close to half a dozen that we really wanna master. And then there's like in the weeds type stuff that I love getting into with people because I love helping people kind of fine tune these specific aspects and I know you do as well. Um, but the habits, the things that we're going to carry with us the rest of our lives and really own those things to me is some of the greatest work because 
I, you know, I'm not great with, uh, with math, so I don't know this number off the top of my head, but if the average person ate three meals a day, seven meals a week, that's 21. 21 times four is what, 84 mm -hmm. roughly? So 84 meals or consumptions in a month, multiply that out by 12, I don't know what that math is, but it's well over a thousand, then you multiply that over decades and decades and decades, and that's decisions. And if those decisions can be even improved, you know, 10% is, is low hanging fruit, but 50% and a different way of thinking, that's how we change people's uh, approach and lives with nutrition. It's not saying you need to eat this way and you need to eat this way and you need it that way. You know, it's meeting the individual where they're at and saying, okay, lay it out for me without judgment, lay out where you're at, mm -hmm. like what you're doing. And most people I'll share as a nutrition coach, they think they're eating healthy and they're not. They think their percentile is 80% plus, and it's not. They, uh, and I don't say that from a judgment place, just from a place of, it's where we give ourselves passes. Because once we see the reality, and then we get on the other side, whew, we yeah. realize, wow, like this, this is where I thought I was, and I realized I was actually in reverse. I was actually 30, 70. And, um, and then there's no looking back at that point. Yeah. You know, you feel good, you look good, you perform good. You know, you've, you've, you've built a self that understands how to be better at this particular arena, you know? I think that it's important too because they don't, um, I, I go back to Weight Watchers because Weight Watchers can work. Uh, it's a plan, it's tracking. You know? Yeah. Um, essentially tracking so that's why people understand what they're eating and has have a more a better understanding of what they're putting in mm -hmm. um but it's they don't teach the or i don't want to say they don't i don't know now but a lot of things like that a lot of diets like that don't teach maintenance or the forever part it's all about this ma yeah this magical thing that happens within the first 30 60 90 days it's because you made a change yeah. you know um and uh, the one thing that I think is beyond that is how do I keep this going for forever? You know, I was having a conversation with the, the girls this morning while we were lifting and they both said like, okay, maybe the last 30 days wasn't perfect because of holidays and travel and you know, all of the things. Um, but the reason why I didn't go like, I went here, you know, maybe I like take like two steps back, but the reasons why I didn't take 10 steps back is because I already have this like, I know what I need to eat. If I really indulged for a day or two, I know that how to get back on track. So that was the difference from taking taking ten steps back versus like you know, or taking two steps back versus ten steps back is making this sustainable. And I thought that that was so powerful. I love that. Mm -hmm. This is the part of me that I think uh, maybe the part that I think needs to be said too. If or add, I should say, if. You're looking for something quick, fast, and easy. Easy. <laughs> it is l l likely not going to be sustainable for you. And results, like anything worthwhile in time, in life, I should say, take time. When you were sharing that, I thought of like your relationship, for some reason your relationship with husband Sean came to me. Mm -hmm. And how unrealistic it would be to think, I meet this person and it's easy, we don't need to put any work into this. Mm -hmm or any relationship, and it's not any different with nutrition or working out or any of these areas that are important to us. And if we're looking for something to do a quick fix, to lose weight fast, you're likely gonna gain that back because what we need to do is carve out, we need to do some maybe uh, excavating on some things that we thought and we built over time and some bad patterns and some conditioning, and we need to lay ground and then water that plant. and. To me, there's no greater investment than your health, and that can come in the form of consistent training and movement and nutrition. And for someone to say invest in a guide like yourself, myself, Aaron, or any form of nutrition coach who out there um, to be your guide to help you build the principles and the habits, real weight loss, real fat loss, real skills, real habits take time. Good weight loss is a, at best a pound or two per week, and most people, to commit to that, the commitment it takes to do that, it is new territory. Good body fat percentage loss is about a, a percent to two per month. And then there's gonna be a tipping point with your muscle. You just can't continue to gain muscle the rest of your life yeah. in terms of the metric. 
it's going to have a point where it's going to level out. And I've learned that over time too, with that in-body scan and just training that there's a maintenance point of preserving lean functional tissue and giving that gift to people. So again, if you're not where you want to be, if you're not feeling the things that you want to feel, if you're tired of like winging it, I would strongly encourage you to get help, invest in yourself for a period of time, and then take those principles and springboard them out into your life and you'll only reap the benefits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the microphone drop. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Episode five, all nutrition focus, my friends. Um, any questions, anything that kind of stirred the pot there for you, please uh, comment. We see those and we'll respond to those. And then we'll see you back next week for episode six. <laughs> With Rosie. <laughs>